Today, we will be dealing with the first chapter, typical configuration of computer system. So, first we shall recall about whatever we have studied in first PU, that is the block diagram of the computer. A computer is designed using four units, they are input unit, central processing unit, memory unit and the output unit. So, first we shall see what is an input unit. Basically, computer needs to perform any kind of operations. So, to solve any problem, it requires input. So, the function of input unit is to send data to the computer. So, input unit sends data to the computer using input devices such as keyboard, mouse, etc. So, the function of input unit is to send data to the computer. The next is the central processing unit. The central processing unit contains subunits such as control unit and the arithmetic and logical unit. The function of the central processing unit is to process the data. The next is the memory unit. The memory unit is the, uh, it contains two subunits that is primary memory and the secondary memory. The function of memory unit is to store the results of the data. Next is the output unit. The function of output unit is to give results to the user or to print the output results. So, the output unit sends the data to the user that is the results to the user using output devices such as printers, monitors, etcetera. So, this is about the block diagram of the computer which we have studied in first PU. Now, we will go to the main concept of this chapter that is electronic configuration of computer system. Okay. The first concept over here is the motherboard. The computer is built up around the motherboard. The motherboard is the most important part of any computer. Now, for example, we human beings have got heart as the main part of our body. In the similar way, the motherboard is the most important part of any computer. So, first we shall see what is the definition of, of motherboard. The motherboard is a printed circuit board used to connect all the system components like CPU, RAM, graphic cards, etc. Now, what is printed circuit board? Printed circuit board is all the electronic components are electrically connected. Now, for example, we have got switch board. The switch board is internally inside the switch board, it contains different wires. So, all these wires are internally connected, that is electrically connected. So, it is called as printed circuit board. So, generally the definition of motherboard is, it is a printed circuit board used to connect all the system components like CPU, RAM, graphic cards, etc. Next is the characteristics of motherboard. The motherboard may be characterized by the form factor, chipset and processor socket. So, first we shall see what is form factor. It is the specification of the motherboard. Specification means motherboard's geometry, dimensions, power supply type, number of ports and electrical requirements. Now, motherboard's geometry is the shape of the motherboard. The dimensions, dimensions is whether it is a two dimension motherboard or a three dimension motherboard. So, that is about the form factor. I repeat, form factor is the specification of the motherboard. Next, second characteristic is chipset. The function of chipset is to coordinate data transfer between various components of a computer. Now, the computer has got four units, that is input unit, CPUs, components of a computer. Next, third one, it is processor socket. It is a place where CPU is connected. In the motherboard, there is a place that is known as processor socket. So, using this processor socket, the CPU is connected to the motherboard. So, three different characteristics of motherboard are form factor, chipset and processor socket. Types of motherboard. Basically, there are four different types of motherboards depending upon the processor that has been used. So, first one is XT motherboard. By the word XT, it stands for extended technology. So, XT motherboard, it stands for extended technology motherboard. It was used in 
earlier times in olden days and before this XT motherboard was being used. In this motherboard, we can find old model processor socket like LIF that is low insertion force socket, then RAM slots DIMM dual inline memory module socket and ISA slot that is industry standard architecture slot. And this motherboard that is XT motherboard it contains 12 pin power connector. So, clear with what is, uh, what is XT motherboard? XT motherboard stands for extended technology motherboard. It was the first type of motherboard used in personal computers. So, uh, this kind of motherboard that is AT motherboard was used in personal computers. Its size is 12 inches long and 11 inches wide. So, advanced technology motherboards I have got PGA socket, SD RAM slots, 20 pin power connector PCI slots and ISA slot from baby AT motherboard. It was introduced in 1987 and its size is 8.5 inches. So, they have got slot type processor sockets such as PGA processor sockets, SD RAM slots, DDR RAM slots, PCI slots, ISA slot, 12 pin power connector and 20 pin power connector. So, I will repeat about the baby AT motherboard. Baby AT motherboard, it is a combination of AT motherboard and XT motherboard. So, both AT motherboard and XT motherboard combined to form a baby AT motherboard. It was introduced in 1987 and its size was 8.5 inches long. Type of motherboard is ATX motherboard. The ATX motherboard stands for advanced technology extended motherboard. Latest motherboard all are called as ATX motherboard designed by ATX form factor. That is at present we are using ATX motherboard. Nowadays in this generation of computers we are using ATX motherboard which is the latest motherboard. In this motherboard we use MPGA processor sockets, DDR RAM slots, AGP slots, SATA connectors, 20 pin and 24 pin ATX power connectors and ports. The size of this motherboard is 12 inches wide by 9.6 inches deep. I repeat about the ATX motherboard. It stands for advanced technology extended motherboard and this is the latest type of motherboard used in present computers. The size of this motherboard is 12 inches wide by 9.6 inches deep. So, we have studied about the types of motherboard. There are four different types of motherboard. The first one is XT motherboard which stands for extended technology motherboard. The second one is AT motherboard advanced technology motherboard and the third one is baby AT motherboard which is a combination of XT motherboard and XT motherboard and the last one is ATX motherboard advanced technology extended motherboard which is used in latest computers. The next topic is on components of motherboard. Now, components means for example, we human beings have got different organs in our body. So, all these organs form a human body like it starts from head, head, hair, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, hands and legs. So, all these are the components of a human being. In a similar way, there are components of motherboard. So, there are seven different components. The first one is the processor which is known as central processing unit CPU. Second one is BIOS, third one is CMOS, fourth one is slots fifth one is disk controllers, sixth is input output ports and the last one is bus. I repeat the motherboard components are processor, BIOS, CMOS, slots, disk controllers, input output ports and the last one is computer bus. Now, we shall go uh, each one in detail. The processor, so processor is the CPU which is known as central processing unit. So, CPU is the main component on the motherboard and it is also called as brain of the computer. Now, CPU is the main component on the motherboard and it is called as brain of the computer. The CPU consists of three major units that is ALU, control unit and registers. Now, of ALU, ALU means it is arithmetic and logic unit which performs arithmetic and 
logic operations on the data. So, all the arithmetic and logical calculations are performed under ALU that is arithmetic and logic unit. The next one is CU that is control unit. It is responsible for organizing processing of data and instructions. So, all the activities all the activities which undergoes under different units of the control uh, on uh, the computer that is from input unit, CPU, memory unit and output unit. So, all the activities which are going under these four units are under the control of control unit. The last one is registers. The registers is a temporary storage areas for holding data and instructions. So, register is a kind of memory chip. It is a memory where temporary instructions and data has been held. Under processor itself, there is a socket known as processor socket. So, processor socket it is a place where CPU is connected to the motherboard. On the motherboard, there is a socket which is known as processor socket. So, processor is being connected to the motherboard using this socket that is processor socket. BIOS, basic input output system. A BIOS is a small chip on the motherboard that holds hardware settings or we can say that a BIOS is a small chip on the motherboard used to load hardware settings like keyboard, monitors and disk drives. So, all these uh, components such as keyboards, monitors, disk drives are loaded. It is because of BIOS, basic input output system which is a small chip on the motherboard. Now, when you on your computer, the BIOS starts to run. When you on your computer, the BIOS starts to run. So, as the computer is switched on, the BIOS performs a small test which is known as POST, power on self testing. So, power on self testing means when the computer is on, BIOS performs a test known as power on self testing. So, what is power on self testing? If power on self testing means it checks whether all the devices which are connected to the computer are connected properly or not and functioning properly or not. Post means power on self testing which means that all the uh, devices, devices such as monitors, mouse, keyboards, disk drives. So, all these are connected to the computer. So, it is performing a test to check whether all these devices are connected properly or not and functioning properly or not. So, this is done by BIOS. I repeat about BIOS, it is basic input output system. It is a small chip on the motherboard to load the hardware settings like keyboard, monitors or disk drives. It starts loading the, uh, uh, the computers such as um, the keyboard, monitors and disk drives. So, now when it starts loading, when your computer is switched on, it starts loading all these hardware settings and it starts to run. Run means it is performing a test known as POST, power on self testing. So, power on self testing is, it is checking whether all the devices connected to your computer are connected properly or not and whether it is functioning properly or not. So, that is about BIOS. Third type of component of uh, motherboard is CMOS complementary metal oxide semiconductor. It is a type of memory chip. It is a memory chip to store date, time and other system setup parameters. It is a type of memory chip used to store date, time and system setup parameters. These parameters are loaded every time when the computer is switched on. Now, you open your laptop. When you open your laptop, at the bottom of the laptop, you can see date, time and many other system parameters. So, all these are under the storage of CMOS. So, CMOS is a memory chip to store date, time and system parameters. So, when you switch on your computers or laptops, this BIOS will be sorry, this CMOS will start loading. So, it starts loading um, all the system parameters such as date and time. BIOS and CMOS are kept powered by a small lithium ion battery located on the motherboard. So, on the motherboard there is a battery known as lithium ion battery. So, BIOS and CMOS will be kept always powered due to this battery that is lithium ion 
battery. This is about the CMOS that is complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Next, a small topic that is microprocessor. A processor or a microprocessor is a small chip that resides within computers and other electronic devices. So, it is a small chip which is being present inside the computer and other electronic devices. Examples are Intel, AMD and Celeron. So, I repeat the definition of microprocessor. It is a small chip that resides within computers and other electronic devices. Next, this concept is very important where you are going to learn different terms that is first one is RAM. So, RAM stands for random access memory, ROM stands for read only memory, DRAM dynamic random access memory, SRAM static random access memory, SDRAM synchronous dynamic random access memory, DDR SDRAM double data rate synchronous dynamic random access memory. So, this is very important all these terms which appears for one mark that is about RAM, ROM, DRAM, SRAM, SDRAM and DDR, SD, RAM. 